On today's episode of Regret Garage, we try and fix our mistakes. So I picked this cement mixer up a while back for my favorite price, free fitty. I don't really have an immediate need for doing a lot of concrete work, but it's definitely going to come in handy in the future. Now it looks like this is a little bit of a homebrew setup, and I'm not going to lie, it's just my style. And from the amount of brazing and bubblegum welds on here, this thing has definitely seen a little bit of work in its time. I mean, there might be some cracks here and there. But hey, as long as it gets the job done, that's what counts. So anyways, I love picking up stuff like this. Some people might just take it straight to the scrapyard, but it's definitely got some more life left in it, and with a little bit of elbow grease, can probably keep going for quite a while yet. Now one thing I noticed when I got it, was there quite a bit of buildup down along the bottom of old concrete and stuff. So, as a part of any good maintenance plan, figured I'd kind of work and chip some of that out of there and try and make her good as used. And things were going pretty well. Had the old spud bar just chipping away there a bit, and we were making some progress. We weren't trying to clear out everything, but, you know, just kind of lighten it up a bit so the old electric motor wouldn't have to work so hard. But as they say, no good deed goes unpunished. And we kind of found the weak spot. Now, you never get overzealous with a pry bar when you're hammering on stuff, so... I don't exactly know what happened, but we seem to have removed a piece of this, we now know, cast iron bottom gear slash bottom. And also realized why they left all that concrete at the bottom there. It was sealing up the gaps and the leaks that are all around the edge. First lesson of the day, put off maintenance. Don't try and fix anything the right way. So this whole bottom piece is like an integrated an integrated gear and kind of spindle here so there's no replacing this is basically the heart of the cement mixer if that thing fails might as well scrap it so these are the pieces of that cast bottom here that broke out when I was chipping away at the concrete and at first I kind of thought man I really had just hammered this thing and cracked it and broke it all out while I was chipping away however upon further inspection you look at the amount of rust on the inside of the cracks. This has been cracked for quite some time. The old concrete was just holding everything together. The band -aid was holding the fingernail on. And even beyond where it broke, you can see that the crack continues for quite a good ways back here along those gear teeth. This is crack. Now I'm sure most people at this point would just straight up take this thing into the shredder, get their $8 worth of scrap out of it. We're going to use this as a motivational tool. Because you don't get mad, you get fixing. And being that this is cast, we're not going to be able to just try and weld it. I mean, maybe you could get some high nickel rod or something, but this is very pretty dirty and there's not a lot of great area here uh, to try and weld without distorting or getting into the bottom roots of those gear teeth there. So I think brazing is going to be the best option for what we got to work with. Now I have brazed maybe a couple of things here and there far from an expert at this and this is definitely going to be probably the most challenging brazing job I've had to do yet to date so let's use this as a uh, learning tool it's a bit of a mission at this point to repair this thing I'm mad at myself that I kind of broke it or at least found its weak spot when probably could have kept on using it as as it was for quite a while but now it's basically useless until we fix it and whether this fails miserably or sort of works mediocre, either way, I'm going to get better at brazing and use this as a means to acquire some new skills. This is probably an impractical repair for the amount of time and effort that you're going to put into trying to fix this. But if you can teach yourselves how to fix it better and learn some of those skills, way more worth it. That way, when there's something actually maybe more expensive or involved that you're trying to repair, you'll have some past experience and 
And having the ability to try and repair something like that is probably worth more than the part that you were originally trying to fix. Alright, so to actually start into this, we're basically going to have to use a wire wheel or sanding wheels, brake cleaner, whatever. It's going to be a mess getting this, you know, 40 years of coagulated grease off of here to get a clean surface. All that rust and scale, all that old cement that's everywhere. Heck, this makes brazing normal metal seem like a cakewalk already. Oh yeah, firing up the greasy old air compressor. <laughs> This petrified grease is not coming off. So we're piecing together the jigsaw parts. So there are the three pieces back in there. That's about as good as that puzzle is going to get put back together. I think we might try to start the brazing from the inside just so we can get those pieces to kind of stay in place and then we'll work and do the finished passes uh, with the whole thing turned upright. Well, first attempt at brazing is going not well. The inside tacks kind of worked all right, but then once we moved to the outside, um, started getting a lot of popping and looking like burning off of the carbon in the cast iron, and uh, now we got a nice lovely mess going. Time to clean it up and consult the Google machine. Let's try this again. Started off pretty terrible and eh, still kind of terrible but getting better. For some reason it seems to favor a richer propane flame than a you know more oxygenated uh, flame that you would normally use for melting when you're going to start cutting. Seems to not flare up and spark quite as much when you have more propane. Well that is one craptastic repair. Might have to do a little bit of grinding in between those teeth. And we're going to throw one more rod at the inside here and then probably call it a day. Had to run the grinder over some of the high spots down at the bottom of the teeth. And for some reason this area here, not here, not here, right here it just refused to braise very well and I cleaned all three pieces the same way that one middle one that was a bear now we're gonna fill in those gaps with some silicone so the initial run of concrete doesn't fall through it but you know, a couple little taps won't hurt either I mean, you really don't have to worry about alignment. Eh. Well, there she is. And I guess the main point of this video really isn't to try and show you how to do a very poor job of brazing some cast iron. Although you did get that as a bonus. This was mainly about showing how when you run into a problem on an old piece of equipment that normally isn't worth repairing, it's sometimes still worth it to just do it so that you actually learn the process of fixing something like that. Now for me personally, I know the first time that you try and 
do a different technique like brazing, something that you're not familiar with, you're always a bit hesitant. You kind of put it off and you don't want to do it. A project like this that you got nothing to lose on and basically the results, anything's better than doing nothing, that gives you a great opportunity for some practice. And this is pretty ugly. I realize that. Next time though, I'm going to get better. We're going to improve our skill, put to use some of the things we learned by doing this project, and we'll be better off for it. I've had people ask me, you know, how the heck do you know how to do that? A lot of times it's through mistakes or, you know, random projects like this that I never expected to get into. But by struggling through it and at least trying, you're already halfway there. Don't let the common sense value of economics keep you from adding into your bank of knowledge. That aspect of owning junk is completely underrated. Because when you're forced to fix things like this, you have to learn stuff, you have to get creative, you have to work with limited resources. You'll never improve if you don't challenge yourself, and brazing is not my strong suit. You could totally go out and buy something brand new from Harbor Freight that's, you know, not going to need repairs like this immediately. Or you can accept the challenge, buckle down, and get to work. Not saying that everything you own has to be old, complete junk, and worn out and needs work all the time, but, well, I guess I kind of fall into that category. There's sometimes more benefits than just saving some money at the beginning. So don't write off that second-hand piece of equipment that might need a bit of TLC. Just might teach you something.